Welcome to this OwnCloud tutorial showing how to enable and configure external storage in OwnCloud 8.1. First, we're going to log into our OwnCloud instance as an admin. You have to be logged in as an admin to be able to access the app management panel inside OwnCloud. When you log in, you'll be taken to the Files view, and in the top left-hand corner, there's a drop-down menu. By clicking the plus Apps button, we'll be taken to the Apps Management Panel. You will see that by default the enabled apps are selected and we can scroll through and see all the apps by default enabled in this instance. We can also click on Not Enabled and since our goal here is to enable external storage support, we'll scroll down under the Not Enabled Apps and find external storage support. We can enable that app and then go back to the Enabled App menu and Click on the Show Description button, which then shows us that the external storage app that we're looking for is now enabled and available. At this point, we can click on the top right-hand menu, which will take us to the admin panel, where all apps can be configured. The external storage shortcut takes us right to the external storage app, and we can go ahead and mount some external storage. What we're going to do is add a local folder on the server. First, enter the location. This is the path on the OwnCloud server where OwnCloud should look for this particular folder. And we can go ahead and give it a name. In this case, we'll call it User Pictures, and we'll enable it for a group. And the little green circle tells us that this external storage mount has been successfully added. We can even enable previews and decide the behavior for when we check for changes, perhaps never, every time somebody directly accesses the file, or every time the file system is used in general. That allows us to control the performance and customize this particular external storage mount point for our unique use case. In this case, let's show what it would look like to add a slightly more complex option, such as an external storage like FTP, which would be hosted on an FTP server somewhere. In here, we can enter all the options from host and username and password in the remote subfolder, and also, again, decide which users or groups this will be mounted for. By clicking the trash can, we will delete the mount point. Now, let's see if we can find the user pictures folder. Where'd it go? Well, first thing we have to do is add it for ourselves. Of course, we added it for the group, but we didn't add it for ourselves, the admin user. Now that it's been added for the admin user, we'll be able to see it in the admin account in the files menu. And under user pictures, there it is. Of course, it says pending because at this time it's scanning the user pictures and determining how big they are well, it's and calculating the size. As you can see, here are some pictures we had in that particular folder, and we can preview them in the web interface. In this particular case, though, we mounted a file system that we don't have permissions to upload or change. We simply have read-write permissions in the user pictures folder. And we go back to the all files. In the left-hand menu, you also notice that there is an external storage link now. The external storage link can be used to filter the entire files view so that you can just see those folders that were mounted using external storage, in this case, user pictures. And that's it for now. Thanks for joining us for this quick walkthrough of the external storage options. I look forward to seeing you on our next video.